Welcome back to Element 14 Presents. I'm Katie and in today's episode Mom. I'm going to... Mom. What, John? You know you made the Lego Go camera. Yes. And the, and the train project. Yes. Could you please help me make my guitar work? What do you think you guys? Should we see if we can make this Lego guitar model actually play music? Right, so let's start again. Welcome back to Element 14 Presents. I'm Katie. And I'm John. And in today's episode we're gonna see if we can make this Lego guitar make music. Right, so now I've taken a Raspberry Pi 3A, I've connected it up to the DF Robot Mini Amplifier, which is connected to this speaker. So those three things are going to get built inside this plastic amplifier. And I'm planning on putting the speaker in the actual speaker. Yep, so if we take off this back panel, there's quite a bit of space in there if we take out this pretend speaker. We will take the studs out. Don't worry about that. This is the code that I'm running on the Raspberry Pi. I've written it in Python. I'm doing my imports. I'm importing Pygame because that's what I'm using to play the audio files. These are just all the setup, the touch sensor because it's an I2C board. I've got the address it's looking for for that. This class has mainly been taken from the examples for the Grove 12 key capacitive touch board. However, there's a few bits I've added. It was, it had pass and print result where it would just print onto the screen what had been pressed. But I've added in this pass and check result. So rather than just printing, it still prints. But if a pad was touched, it will return which number was Pressed, so I know which channel is currently being touched and what sound I want it to play. I've got my initialization and setup and then I um, listen to see what it's returning from the MPR121 touch sensor board. So that's my result and then I'm putting the result through this pass and check result which will return back if uh, a channel was pressed what channel it was and I've connected up channel four, five, six, and seven. So if it was one of these that was pressed, it will uh, use this Pygame music.load to load the audio and then play it for what I want each pad to do. I've just put in the A major, D major, E major, and G major chords, but you could just take this out and swap it to any music file if you wanted different chords or if you wanted a actual song to be played and then it will do sleep for one and then go back and keep checking to see if any other buttons have been pressed. So it's fairly straightforward but you could change it if you wanted to. So as um, a first test I've written a little Python program We've recorded playing a few different guitar chords and I've connected these buttons up to the Raspberry Pi GPIO. Now John, if you press that first one, we get one note and if you press that one, we get those notes. So what do you think John, if we drilled some holes in the neck and stuck those buttons through, what would you think? Probably we need to shrink the buttons. We need to shrink the buttons. You want them a bit more hidden? Probably smaller because I don't... I think they're going to protrude through the strings and make it even harder for my guitar to be made. Okay. And it will ruin the strings more. So, what about, John? I found this Seed Studio uh, 12 key capacitive touch which is uh, uses 
I squared C to communicate. So we could plug that into the Raspberry Pi and then we could actually do touch sensitive buttons. Should we give that a go? Yeah. Okay, so we plug this in. If I change this uh, Python code to one that will monitor the communications from the I squared C. You want to touch that first pad? Oh, should we use the crocodile clips? Right. John, what do you think of the capacitive touch? Do you think that will be really cool? Um, maybe. So my thinking is if we take the back of the guitar and we take four of these tiles, we could conduct, cover them in a, a conductive tape or a conductive paint and make them sort of touch sensitive Ooh. on the back of the neck. So it will be invisible to the front whilst it's in the stand, but we can sort of just press and press each button like that. What do you think of that as an idea? Sounds better. Okay. So. A lot better than buttons. Okay. Are you happy with that code though and how it's playing the four different notes? Yes. Right. So it's time to assemble the Pi and the amplifier and the speaker inside the case and sort out these capacitive touch buttons and then I think we'll be ready to go. Is it getting exciting now, John? Yes. Super. And now I'm filling with this. Okay. So the amplifier still looks like the amplifier, but we've got a few pieces missing. If we turn it around, inside here, we've got a speaker, our little amplifier board, a Raspberry Pi, and a board that does um, sort of touch sensitive to I squared C, which is connected to the Raspberry Pi. Now, from that, I have fed four very thin wires through this tubing, which I think is actually Lego pneumatic tubing that they're using for this model. Um, squeeze that through and it's coming out here. We're going to neaten this off by actually putting it into where it would have attached with the guitar. So we had a little bit of a test. We tried using some sort of conductive paint to connect into this. The conductive paint worked well, but it was a bit fragile and seemed to flick off at the corners and it was quite hard to get a thick enough coating. I thought having a go with some um, conductive tape, just like copper tape, uh, would be interesting. So we've put a few pads on the back of the guitar and like that, when I touch them, it will make the guitar sound. And then the top one. Oops, that was me. Right, the fourth pad is on my desk because I've just tested how we can make those pads hidden. So I've put a layer of vinyl on top of it and we can test that it still detects through the layer of vinyl, which leads me to a way to hide these copper pads. I went online and had a look at these tan coloured bricks and found an RGB value uh, for the colour code that's used for them. So I've got um, vinyl sheets that can go through my normal inkjet printer. I've got glossy and matte and it means you can print onto the vinyl. So I use that RGB value. I've noticed before that the colour can be a bit different depending on if it's on the vinyl or the matte. So I printed off a sheet of that RGB value on glossy and a sheet on matte and I've stuck it onto one of the squares. This side is the matte and that side is the glossy and actually the glossy disguises it really well. It's a really good colour match and because this is shiny plastic um, it fits the colour really well. So whilst John's reassembling the guitar that he keeps fiddling with, <laughs> this is my sheet of glossy vinyl that I printed with that test bit missing. So I'm going to cut this out and cover 
the neck of the guitar and around the side slightly just to hide where these wires are and hopefully that should disguise all of this wiring and make it look fairly like the original guitar. So I've taken the piece that connected to the guitar, I'm going to use the rotary tool and just cut a channel in it that I can take the wires out of the back of it and now when we clip it in the wires are sort of hidden but go around. Now these wires are going to go up to the neck of the guitar and I've just trapped the bare end of the first wire under the conductive tape on the neck of the guitar. Then the second wire up to a second pad onto the third and then finally the fourth. So I've now got all four conductive pads. Now the next thing to do is to measure how long a piece of vinyl I need to cover these pads. I'm going to cut it out roughly to size because then I can trim it on the guitar later. I stuck it onto one side covering the wires, then smooth it out, fold it over to cover the pads and then around to secure it on the other side of the neck of the guitar. And now they're fairly well covered and secure and the wires are all hidden. So John, should we show them all what we've made? Yes. Okay. So it still looks like the Lego guitar and the amplifier, but then, you ready? Is it what you thought? it would be like when you came and asked me to help you make your Lego guitar yes. actually work. Do you think everyone else should go out and make one? Yes. So, do you think you'll uh, make a Lego guitar like this? Or have you got a different Lego build that you'd like to make work with electronics added? Let me know in the comments below. And that's all for now, so I'll see you next time. Bye! Right, should we make a plan then on this? Not a plan! Isn't it good when a plan comes together? No! Should I turn off the other camera? Nope. Still recording us. I know. Are we going to cut this part out of the video? If we don't, it'll cut to me eating my glasses. Right. Uh, oh. Do you think everyone else should go out and make one? Mm. <laughs> Just say yes when I ask you. I, uh, okay? It's... Is it what you thought we were going to make when you asked me to make your Lego guitar actually work like a guitar? <laughs>